Hello, it's Thursday, Thirsty Thursday I guess, so this, I know it, it looks like a Nipah type of thing, it's not, this will be a colch. So this is the very first paw, it was kegged um, about two hours ago, two and a half hours ago this was kegged. Um, this is the colch. Uh, lost them louts using Sabro and the Novalaga yeast. So this was dropped onto a yeast cake. So this is the third iteration of using Novalaga that I've done. Um, the last of this beer, the Lost them louts version two with Sabro, um, used the USO five, and that dropped really clear this is the nova lager crashed one uh finished at 1.010 and comes in at 4.9 percent uh i only made this oh, there's a cat scratching at the door sorry right so I only made this yeah, last Thursday, it's only been a week, week from grain to glass really. Um, how is it? Let's go in and see. Um, not much on the aroma at all. Very clean I suppose. This is very cold. As I say it was um, just coming out of the fermenter two and a half hours ago and that was at about 3.8 degrees 3.5 degrees so it is still pretty cold and then I did my usual three minutes at 30 psi rocking while still connected to the gas and now I believe I have it about 15 psi serving pressure for something this Supposedly, um, like a colch. So, how does it taste? Oh, that is absolutely lovely. That really is. That is clean, fresh. It's got a little bit of bite, almost like a citra bite. <clears throat> That is very nice indeed. Um, it's clean finish again. A little bit of, I would say, almost like a citra note, but it's it's a little bit sharper than that. So, and there's not very little bitterness to no bitterness whatsoever on this. It's so well balanced. It's exactly the same recipe. Whereas when I first did the. Um, the calls with the USO5 that came out a little bitter at first. Very first Paul. This isn't at all at all. That is clean. With just a little touch of um Citra notes almost that grapefruity. I mean, this is normally like a pithy with the USO5. When I did it before, it was quite pithy grapefruity that kind of bitterness that you get if you eat the, the pith of citrus fruits or you have grapefruit and I have a touch of that with it. I mean, this is clean citrus fruits, this is lime and lemon. It's a completely different beer using Nova Lager yeast. And I am surprised. I was expecting maybe it'd be cleaner, but I, and crisper on the mouthfeel. I mean, you don't get much cleaner than USO5, but it's still an ale yeast, so you don't get that crispness. This, this is crisp. But the initial fruits of the, because it's the same Sabro, it's the same batch of Sabro, um, 
done to the exactly the same recipe. Fermentation slightly different though. Obviously using the Nova Lager yeast, this was fermented at 15 degrees for five days. No, it wasn't. 15 degrees for three days, I think. Then a day at, um, yeah, 15 degrees for three days, one day at 17 degrees, and then three days at three degrees. <laughs> Give me seven days, exactly. Uh, cake today. Uh, yeah, I have to say, there isn't anything this Nova Lager yeast has done for me that I, I haven't really, really enjoyed, and early. That is so smashable. Th that, if we actually get some fucking sunshine, that would just be absolutely amazing. I know it's going to be absolutely dreadful weekend. I'm going to just put that aside a bit and get this glass, small glass, and have some of the Bocca Nova. I'll show you the how the the traditional Bock is going. I'll just do a bit because I also want to show you, which is quite strong, seven percent. So yeah, it's a long weekend again, coronation weekend. I shan't be watching because I'm at work. But I should, oh, look at that. It's come out very pretty. Um, you can't really see that. I'll put a little bit more in just so, yeah, a little bit more just so we can see. Obviously, nothing more than that. So as I say, this is 7%. Um, you really can't see through that, can you? Uh, I should do it. I should have a torch, but it's 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 clearing up nicely. It's well carbonated, and you just get boof, a hit of malt there. Ah, oh, it's, it's almost raisiny. You know, like a Belgian double kind of thing. Um, yeah, or an Abbey beer, a, strong, a nice Abbey beer. It's got that kind of rich malty aroma. That you get caramel toffee. I don't get tobacco, some people do with malts, but yeah, raisins, I get raisins. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, you can't tell, can you? Flavour wise. It's a lot richer on the palate. Um, bit of biscuit, bit of bread, and a touch of raisin. Maybe toast. Maybe a little touch of toast. Yeah, a touch of toast, caramel, toffee, notes. It's it's very. Very complex, I would say. It's quite a complex beer. And yet, it's a, such a clean, dry finish. There's no, there's no, nothing out with this whatsoever. Um, clarity wise, yeah, it's been in the, been in the keg now for maybe fortnight at least. More than a fortnight, maybe three weeks in the keg. And it is clearing, but this is once again, this is a Nova Lager yeast. Um, it makes a great beer. It makes a really good beer. Um, oof. Doing that then, I, I got almost some. I'm guessing I'm getting the CO2, but I, it almost like I was getting some phenols off it. Oof. Let's try that again. I'm getting something. And I can't tell what it is. Mm, something recognisable, but I can't think what. It's really, really good though. If you get a chance, certainly. Uh, this is the traditional Bock recipe, and I have to make a note. No. <clears throat> no. I have both of these books. 
the Bible and the traditional bock is exactly the same in both apart from the yeast. The yeast is different in both. Now I don't know why that is, whether that's to do with um, having some kind of, oh, do you know what, it's easy if I find it in this one first, I'll find it in this one and then I'll, I'll kind of explain. Oh, I've got a beard to go there, haven't I? Uh, traditional bot. So, what page is that? 92 ish. Let's find it in there. So, in this book, the original Bible, page 92 ish. It's not at all. Of course, there's a bit of. Uh, uh, do you know what? Talk amongst yourselves, five minutes while I try and find this. Ah, there we are. So, in this one, it uses the Y yeast Bohemian Lager. Whereas, oh, I'm trying to find some space so I can put these. Uh, whereas in this one, it uses White Labs WLP820 Oktoberfest yeast. Now, I haven't been through both books and checked the yeasts for other beers. Oh, let's try it. Turn the page. Uh, so, Doppelbock. What's a Doppelbock use? That's Y yeast Bohemian Lager in the new, in the old one. Ah, and this is Y yeast Bohemian Lager in this one. So it's not, because I, I did wonder whether it was a thing, whether they started using White Labs instead of Y yeast. Um, when at Brew UK, which Greg uses um, kind of business. So I wasn't, so I, I, I don't get it, it just changed. He, he must have just thought, I'll try that yeast and it's worked better with that yeast. So that was the version two. Um, but it doesn't matter for my version because I've used Nova Lager. It's completely different yeast altogether, but the both recipes are exactly the same. However, so yeah, there we are. That's the, I don't know if you heard that, that's my eldest returning sounding really northern, as northern as he could. Oh, all right. <clears throat> so that's that. Really happy with that. Now, obviously I need to do a third, just to bring you back. So this is the third the original beer that I did with the Nova Lager yeast, and this is the Nova Czech, Czech Pilsner. And this has been probably sat in the keg now for f four weeks now. So this is four weeks in the keg, kind of conditioning. Uh, so I just wanna, yeah, not bad. Claret is not, 100% but it's I mean time obviously now I did obviously say when I started using the Nova Lager yeast for me it is that time element that I love being able to get a grain to glass in a week it's incredible being able to get a grain to glass with a pilsner in a week and a half fantastic to have it to start to clear out as well i mean it's not 100 percent. it's not great i mean it's not you can see my hand through there can't you but that it's got a lovely little um cap there look at that little that really is a white cap that's a lovely white cap and it holds reasonably well you get pretty pretty uh good carbonation on it and lacing on the glass from it I have no complaints and as for the taste for yeah four weeks in three four weeks in aroma just smells earthy maybe a bit earthy yeah the size I would or would expect On the taste, very much 
um, dry, clean, really crisp, dry. Not really, not dry, dry, but lager dry, crisp um, finish. It is a dry, crisp finish. It is lager, but it's not. Um, you know when you do say like a cider and you make a, a, a cider and it drops below um, 0.998 or something, um, it drops below 1.0 when you make it with the uh, final gravity and it's really dry. It's not that kind of dry, it is lager dry. So I. If I remember, this finished about 1.008, and it tastes like it. Clean finish, earthy, no pepperiness. No, the spice seems to have dissipated a bit. It it tastes just like a pilsner, like a pilsner, yeah, and it's good. So. I guess in conclusion, I should say, using what I've done, the three beers are a Pilsner, a Rich Bock, and only just is the Kolsch. And no complaints whatsoever for that yeast on any of those points, on any of those beers. I mean, if I was fussy, I would say clarity. But I'm not really fussy. Um, certainly not in that way. Clarity isn't the greatest for me. Need be that, however, carbonation. It doesn't. The, the doesn't stay around. It doesn't stay around that carbonation like that. The, the head. Sorry, you don't really get a head on that. That just could be down to my brewing. Um, that I haven't even saw. Swilled that, I could swill that a bit, get some head, yeah, it makes a nice head. Stays there, and that's only just done. Um, same again with the pills. Little head, as you'd expect. Builds nicely. It's a lovely little white cap, that. Um, good carbonation on all of them. And yes, that was the only odd thing that I've found so far is that the box doesn't keep head. All the rest do. Uh, get good lacing and all that. Um, I'm so happy with this yeast. I've finished for now with that. Um, I was going to brew today, but and then I did the. I, I, I can't be bothered to be honest. I, I just, my back's killing me today. I don't know what it is. I've slept in an awkward position, and now all down one side of my back is absolute agony. And I move. I hate being older really fucking painful at times um so i couldn't be asked today i was going to then i just thought no no do you know what i could just can't be bothered so what i will do is um i probably brew on the sunday having the long weekend means i can spend a day with the family either the sunday or the monday so i may as well brew one of those days the weather's not meant to be brilliant so we'll see how it goes because well, obviously I'm brewing outside and stormy, rainy and all that kind of palaver is not great. So we're doing American wheat now. The switch out, doing American wheat. I may do an American wheat and add some puree as Matt Callaby has done with his apricot beer. Uh, it sounds fantastic. Um, so I might get, but I haven't got time, have I? I was thinking that. Well, no, because he, he has it in once fermentation's over. So, yeah, I might get some pure air. Chuck that in. Um, the apricot sounds really nice. It does. It sounds really nice. So, I might have a go at that. Or I may change my mind and do something different. But I'm definitely doing an American wheat beer. I'll do the basics for an American wheat beer. I have um, some yeast in there. Excuse me. That gets the grain. <sighs> Oops, bought there, didn't I? <laughs> Coming back to this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get the American wheat beer done. I've got some yeast from Cross Um 
and I, I can't remember its name, but it, 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 it's for doing like wheat beers. I, can't, I just can't off the top of my head remember the name of it. Um, so I'll do that as something different uh, for a change. I'm going to keep some of the yeast out of that. I haven't worked clean the ferment yet, and as I said, it's been two and a half, so I've just done it, and I'm just going to. Today, I just can't be asked moving about, lifting the ferment around with my uh, shoulder being as it is, my back. So I'll get that done tomorrow, get the, some of the yeast out of there into a small um, kilner jar, one of these. Might even get two kilner jars worth of it. Um, put aside that Novolag yeast, because I have to say, it really is a wonderful yeast and a great game changer. Um, have anything else to say? No, I think I've pretty much covered it. Um, oh, I did get a book. I got a book the other day. Um, where is it? I think I brought it in. Yes, I did. This book. All British beers and how to make them. Uh, by Dr. John Harrison and members of the Durden Park Beer Circle. Now, uh, a normal price for this is six ninety five. Now I ordered it um, when Sarah Pantry put it a link up to it and about it on Brewtube Facebook page. Um, must be a month or so ago, about a month ago, and I put uh, an order in for it and Mr. Harrison got back to me and said uh, sorry but I'm away on holiday until the 27th of April so <clears throat> as I'm away that long and you put the order in now I will make it for five pounds so five pounds plus postage and there's a lot of recipes in here I mean the recipes are very short on detail to be honest but there's 131 recipes in here, 131, um, but if I show you quickly, um, there's a page of recipes there, that's how short the recipes are, so recipes are per imperial gallon, So, but there's some little small no addendum notes like little these so this one says that um the book was published at a time when it was difficult for home brewers to get good malts and fresh hops brewing methods one specifies a mash time of three hours at 150 f so it's in foreign fahrenheit for a start <coughs> which is obviously it's been a while since they've done this uh, modern malts are highly modified and usually do not require such a long mash. Consequently, the mash time can be reduced to 60 minutes, which is good. I didn't fancy doing a three hour mash personally. Um, the recipes use imperial weights and volumes, and the temperatures is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. The brew length of the recipe is one imperial gallon. And then it gives that conversion chart for pounds to kilograms, ounces to grams, UK to US gallons, and Fahrenheit to Celsius. Which are modern day, we don't really need all that with our phones. I, I'm confused by the brew length of the recipes is one imperial gallon. I'm assuming what you're after is one imperial gallon. It's your final beer. I could be wrong. Um, and the recipes per imperial gallon. Oh, per imperial gallon is four and a half litres. So, this is where I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've got to really look into this, really read it, but I, it's really interesting. Um, some of the beers in there look really exciting, and so I might have a couple of them to do this year, get them on the Hampel, <sighs> the Aldi Porters, and um, some Amber, some, there's, some, there's 80 shilling in there, a proper 80 shilling recipe as well, that was what. For one of the first things that took my mind, uh, to, I took note of. Uh, so I'll be looking at reading up on that, see where it goes and how it works out and such. And we'll get a beer done. Get a beer, at least one beer. Right, it's been 25 minutes, just about. So 
I haven't got much more to say. If you haven't tried Novelagis, try it, make a beer, see what you think. Um, for me, it's a game changer. I absolutely love it. I will be buying more and more of it and using it more and more often. Um, <coughs> future brews, we have uh, an American wheat beer. Then I'm going to go and do, I will do this sour. I'm going to buy some bloody watermelon puree and make a watermelon sour this year. I've done the Pilsner. That was one of last year's to brews. So I've done that. So I may as well do another of my to brews from last year and get it done. The watermelon sour. I do have the Philly sour yeast still sat there looking at me saying, brew me. Um, and then some of the beers I'd mentioned before, I think there was a bitter from the camera book. Uh, and a few others. So that's all to come. Anyway, so I'll also I was going to start looking at there's another book I want to talk about. Um the sort of books that are really the home curing thing. Um Scotch Pie. Scotch Pie's been showing me his uh has been showing me his sausage. Yes. So he was on YouTube doing about his uh Pilsner that he'd done and also tasting of his sausage all uh, sausages so um been looking at this and also this because i'm gonna start i want to get some sausages done i really do uh, i might get a dryer or something to do it a bit more maybe a bit of built on as well um but i'm really excited the idea of getting some of that done um, right, that's it. That's stuff to come. Anyway, that's it, I suppose. <laughs> so, if you got this far, thank you for watching all of it. Um, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.